salacious text messages between Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes and his lawyer come to light during his trial on charges for seditious conspiracy. How does it fit into the case? I'm Anjanette Levy, and welcome to Law and Crime's latest edition of the Sidebar Podcast. Well, Stuart Rhodes faces a number of charges related to the attack on the Capitol on January 6, 2021. He is the leader of the militia group, the Oath Keepers, and his trial is underway in federal district court in Washington, D.C. And something that's come up in this trial um, is the fact that he apparently was exchanging some kind of sexy, kind of sexting kind of uh, text messages with his attorney. Her name is Kelly Sorrell, and she faces charges uh, in a separate case, a conspiracy charge. And she has claimed her communications with Rhodes are covered under attorney-client privilege. But prosecutors say she didn't really do any legal work for Rhodes or the Oath Keepers until after January 6th of 2021, after the attack on the Capitol. And that before then, the text messages showed she had a relationship with Rhodes, possibly a romantic relationship, her client. So joining me to talk about all of this is Adam Plasfeld. He's been covering the case for lawandcrime.com. He is the managing editor of the website. So Adam, uh, thanks for coming back on to Sidebar. Let's start, first of all, with the very latest in the trial of Stuart Rhodes. We're going to take just a minute here to thank our friends Brian and Chrissy at the Commercial Break podcast. And you know why we're doing that? Because they gave us a little bit of cash to do it. Brian and Chrissy in the Commercial Break look at burning questions like, should I learn a Martian light language? And do television preachers have big enough airplanes? Well, I know you guys have really never asked yourselves those questions, but the commercial break has those questions answered for you. And that's because they are one of Apple's top three comedy improv podcasts. And you can find it on all of the major podcast platforms like Apple, Spotify, Google, and many more. And you can also watch the commercial break at youtube.com slash the commercial break. And you'll also find it on the podcast website, TCB podcast. Dot com. Brian and Chrissy are best friends, and they get together every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to talk about life, love, and the pursuit of absurdity. Things like t- TV dating shows, Monster Hunters, Terrible Psychic Readings, you name it, they've got it for you. So check it out. The commercial break is available anywhere you get your podcasts and at youtube.com slash the commercial break and tcbpodcast.com. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but guess what? It's free. So just before the lunch recess, we have a new witness. It's Captain Ronald Ortega, who was the captain of the Capitol Police, who's just giving the jury the lay of the land. What was happening at the Capitol on January 6th? He is the vessel through which the government is going to introduce videos from that day, including we've seen already videos of the Oath Keepers in stack formation uh, in entering the Capitol, in front of the Capitol, uh, in front of the entrance. So we'll see more videos come into evidence through his testimony. And just before that was the testimony by FBI agent Sylvia uh, Hilgeman, who is basically was on the stand for a number of days and through which we saw those text messages that you alluded to earlier. She was the one who introduced the exchanges between Stuart Rhodes and uh, Kelly Sorrell. Uh, We'll get to those in just a second. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what Rhodes' defense is here. So the right now, uh, Stuart Rhodes is charged with the top charges, seditious conspiracy and other felonies uh, in connection with the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Now, the FBI witness who I alluded to earlier, she was there to discuss one aspect of the alleged plot that was the quick reaction force. That was a subset of Oath Keepers members that were staying at a comfort inn in Boston, Virginia, a subsection of Alexandria. And the prosecutor's allegation is that they planned to, if President Trump called them, they would have ferried weapons across the Potomac River in order to stop the congressional certification of uh, President Biden's victory. So that was the focus of that FBI witness who was introducing 
surveillance footage from inside the Comfort Inn. Now, you had asked about uh, Stuart Rhodes' defense here. His attorneys pretty much tried to distance him from the Q, what's known as a QRF, Quick Reaction Force. They said he wasn't at the Comfort Inn in Boston. Uh, the prosecutors admitted evidence about showing thousands of dollars in purchases of weapons and related equipment that he made on a kind of cross-country travel to Washington, D.C. Uh, the lawyers were saying that those purchases were legal. Uh, they're trying to present a defense. So far as I'm aware, the Oath Keepers have never actually disputed that there was this QRF in place but they have, the defense has been that the essentially, if Trump had invoked the Insurrection Act, they could have acted in the capacity as essentially his private militia. So a lot of right now we're in the trial phase. So the evidence is coming in and we'll see what arguments they make of it. But that's some of the arguments that we've been hearing in opening statements and pretrial arguments. And it's coming into focus every day. Wow. Um, I, well, that's a pretty wild and pretty crazy stuff to think that you'd somehow become part of, uh, you know, a sitting president's, you know, militia or what have you. Um, so I want Absolutely. to look at these text messages now. Um, these are between Stuart Rhodes and Kelly Sorrell, his uh, attorney, and they are from January 3rd of 2021. So these are before the actual attack on the Capitol. And she says, look, he's my, I'm his lawyer. Uh, she's denying they had a romantic relationship, but uh, I'll just start with the one, first text message. You know, it says, speaking of blanking, and you can use your imagination as to what that means. If you need some, come on over. That's Stuart Rhodes to Kelly Sorrell. And she, and she has some kind of emoji and says, as founder of the Oath Keepers, she says, I've got my girlies for the night. And he says, ha, 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 damn right. And Rhodes then says, no sweat. I'll see you in the morning. Maybe I'll drag you into my hotel room and throw you on the bed then. And she said, I'm going to have to go to rehab. Okay. And then she says, and my body will just respond with a kind of a face palm emoji. See, that's how I know you're trouble. You're too good at what you do. Whole bad boy thing. I am a damn, damn moth to a flame. I really am replying my teenage years. Uh, and he says, ha, 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 ha. So how is this communication, which, you know, it doesn't confirm she had a romantic relationship with him. You know, she's like, oh, I can't come over tonight or what have you. But certainly, you know, it, it suggests she's not offended by uh, the communication from Stuart Rhodes. How does this play into and fit into the case, if at all? So it's, as I was saying earlier, we're getting bits and pieces as the evidence collection phase goes. So we'll probably see this again once the prosecution makes its case in closing arguments. What it does suggest here is, as you noted, that there's something beyond what they allege to be an attorney-client relationship going on here. And a little bit of background, uh, Stuart Rhodes is, of course, the founder and leader of the Oath Keepers. Uh, Kelly Sorrell what is purportedly his attorney. Uh, she has, they have both been charged her separately. She is not charged with seditious conspiracy, but she's also charged with serious offenses in connection with January 6th. And at one point even claimed to be acting member, excuse me, acting president of the Oath Keepers following Rhodes's indictment. So it kind of goes to the question of what was her role exactly? Is she as the government suggests, essentially Stuart Rhodes' girlfriend, uh, who assisted in this plot against the congressional certification, or is she a attorney who is providing legal services to Stuart Rhodes? So the evidence came in without a kind of thorough explanation as to where the government is going with this. Uh, one assumes that this will be developed and explained as the different data points come in and get put all together. But it does undermine something that Ms. Sorrell has insisted from the beginning, that they do not have a romantic relationship, that she is his attorney and was working with him in that capacity. Uh, and it's something that really does undermine that adamant ins 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 insistence that she had since her bail hearing, where one of the grounds in which the, the judge denied bail was 
describing her relationship with Stuart Rooms. Right. And uh, she denied that she had a romantic relationship. But, you know, it begs the question, what is she doing in this hotel, um, you know, in the same city with Stuart Rhodes on January 3rd, three days before January 6th? And she's there with them. Yes, you could argue she's there as his legal counsel, what have you. Um, but it sounds like she was there as possibly more than that. We, we don't know, okay? I'm not going to, you know, come to conclusions. But this obviously looks like she wasn't, you know, rejecting. She said, yeah, I'm, I'm busy tonight with my girlies or whatever. But she didn't, you know, just say, hey, don't talk to me like that. I'm your lawyer, you know, not that right, right. she would. She's and like, she dude, I can't. I can't come over and hang out with you like that because I'm your lawyer. I mean, that's a big no-no as far as lawyers and clients go. Right. And she did suggest a willingness to come over in a different circumstance. She said, I'd be, I'm a moth to a flame and the flame emoji instead of the actual word. Uh, that this was something that suggested, let's put it politely, a familiarity uh, between the two of them. And that uh, this was three days before January 6th. They're both charged with allegations related to the January 6th assault on the Capitol. And insofar as Stuart Rhodes' need for legal services, yes, lawyers retain lawyers all the time, but it should be mentioned that Stuart Rhodes is a Yale-educated lawyer who, uh, whose thoughts about the legality about what he was allegedly doing on January 6th has come up time and again. You see him speaking to Oath Keepers members about where the line to conspiracy would be drawn. And that's one thing, you know, I've spoken to uh, his estranged wife in an interview one time. And one of the things that she emphasized in that interview was the fact that Sewer Rhodes is very cognizant of what crosses the line to the type of criminal conspiracy that's alleged. And so uh, we'll find out what more prosecutors say about this supposed attorney-client relationship and how far these text messages go toward undermining that. Yeah, most definitely. Well, I'm looking forward to reading all of your coverage on lawandcrime.com. It's very interesting. And uh, I'm sure Stuart Rhodes, as an attorney, knows just how far he can go. So Adam Klasfeld, thanks again for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.